Hi, this is the second tutorial in a series about brushes in Photoshop. If you missed the last lesson, there's a link to it in the description for this one. By the way, this is how brushes worked in CS4 and before. They've changed in CS5, so I'll be showing you those later. If you're ready, tap B to grab your paintbrush, and then we'll just open up the brushes panel. If you don't have it handy, you can just tap F5 to do that. Let's explore a bit more. I'm going to start by clicking on the Brush Tip Shape button, and I'm still using the Dune Brush tip that I changed to at the end of the last lesson. I have the diameter set to 80 pixels, no flips, the angle is 0, roundness is 100, and the spacing is set to 50%. And that reminds me of something that I should have shown you at the end of the last lesson and forgot to do. And that is, you can disable the spacing by just clicking here in that little checkbox. And when you do, then the spacing is controlled by the speed with which you move your mouse or your pen on your tablet, which is what I'm doing right now. It's basically the same kind of thing you can get by checking the airbrush button up here, except I find it much quicker to work with and much more intuitive and easier all around. So I should have shown you that, and I forgot to, and now you have it. And I'll just undo and make those strokes go away. So at the end of the last lesson, I also told you that you could change all of these things dynamically. And we do that by using the shape dynamics up here in this little run of things. So we can click here to enable the shape dynamics, and then if we click on the word Shape Dynamics, that opens up this pane which has all of these sliders and menus and checkboxes and things. And that's how you actually tweak the various parameters. So the first slider here is Size Jitter. That introduces a random size variation that's independent of whatever you're using for your control down here. Let me show you what I mean. Right now the control is set to pen pressure, and that of course will only work if you happen to have a graphics tablet. So I do, I have a Wacom, and I recommend Wacom because, among other things, you're never going to have a pen that loses its battery power and gets weird on you because they don't have any batteries. So I'm using a Wacom tablet, and I've got my size set up to control with my pen pressure, and if I add a size jitter, and we'll go all the way up to 100%, then even though I'm controlling it with the pressure, just the way that you may have... Um, gotten used to doing before, I'm still getting all of this variation in the middle of it. And that can really add an interesting sort of thing to your drawing as you go. I'm going to undo those two strokes. So that's a jitter, and it happens no matter what else is going on. The size, of course, the largest size is the size that you have set for your brush back in the um, brush tip shape. The minimum diameter is the smallest percentage that the brush tip shape will shrink to. So right now it's set to zero, which means it can go away to nothing. I'm going to change the control here to off, and because I have a jitter, all that means is I have no control over it. It's still going to jitter, but it's going to jitter all on its own, and nothing that I do is going to change it. If we change the minimum diameter here to 50%, then because we have a brush that is 80 pixels, the smallest little piece we're going to have in here is going to be 40 pixels. So you see how that works. If I change it to 75, of course, the smallest would be 60, and so on. So I'm going to change it back down to zero because it's easier to see the rest of this stuff. And I'm going to undo those strokes. And now let's change the control to fade, and let's put the jitter back at zero too. Now, fade starts with the maximum size, and then it goes down to the minimum size in the number of steps that we have here. So right now it's set to 20, which means that 20 little brush tabs, and it will fade away to nothing because the minimum diameter is set at nothing. If I change the fade to 5, for instance, then we'll have 5 brush tabs, and it'll fade away to nothing, and you can count them so you can make sure that's exactly what it's doing. If we have the minimum diameter set to something larger, like 8%, then it will fade down to 8%, and it will keep that 8% for the rest of the stroke, no matter how long the stroke is. So that's how that works. And we'll undo all of those. Pen pressure we've already seen. That's the one that is in so many of the presets, and it just um, means that the lighter the pressure on your tablet, the smaller the stroke, and the greater the pressure, the larger the stroke. And if we set that back down to zero, you'll be able to see that more easily. But you can just vary the size of the stroke by the amount of pressure that you're using. Pen tilt changes the size of the stroke depending on the tilt of the pen in relation to the tablet. So if it is straight up and down, if it's perpendicular to the tablet, you get the smallest possible stroke. And then as you lay it down so that the angle becomes more acute, you get a larger stroke. 
This is the one that will let you get a stroke that is actually larger than the set size of your stroke in the brush tip shape. And you do that by using the tilt scale. The larger the tilt scale, the larger the stroke becomes. So you can have a stroke that gets really huge if you want to. Up to 200% um, of the size that it was in the original um, brush tip shape. So um, if you are using the size jitter with pen tilt in conjunction with the angle jitter, by the way, the tilt scale is applied before the angle is, which can be important. And the final thing is the stylus wheel. Now the stylus wheel is wonderful if you happen to have an airbrush stylus that has a wheel on it because it means that you can have very thick transparent strokes and very fine opaque ones if you happen to be using other dynamics as well. And that is really wonderful sometimes, but I don't have a airbrush stylus right now, so I can't show you how that works. All I would get is this little warning button here that says, you don't have one of those, you can't actually control it this way. Let's um, turn that back off. And now we've taken care of all of that. Let's take a look at the angle jitter. Once again, the first slider is a jitter. So that is just added as a jitter. And the smaller the number, the smaller the degrees that are added, and the larger the number, the greater till you get to 360 degrees, where it's just all over the place. And once again, if the control is set to off, then that just means there's no control. If you have a jitter, you've still got the jitter. And if you have something else controlling the jitter, you still have the jitter if you've got the jitter. So turn the jitter off if you don't want it. The next one is fade. And the way that the fade works is to add zero degrees to the initial brush stroke and then go through 360 degrees in the number of steps that you have here. So with 15, it'll take 15 brush dabs to get back to where I started. And then it will just have that for the rest of the stroke. So if you're careful about the number of brush dabs you lay down, you can get these really interesting kinds of effects. And um, I think that looks really cool, but that's me. Pen pressure, once again, will add zero degrees or up to um, 360, depending on the amount of pressure that you have applied to your pen. And the same with pen tilt and the stylus wheel. They work the way that they did before. Rotation if you have a special pen that lets you use rotation, will let you rotate your stroke according to the rotation of your pen, which sounds really neat, but I don't happen to have one of those, so once again, I can't show you that. Initial direction puts the stroke perpendicular to the way that your pen was moving during the first stroke that you made, and then leaves it at that angle for all subsequent portions of the stroke. So you get that kind of effect. And um, with that one, mostly what you can do is change the direction that the stroke is going, and then keep it that way. Direction lets you change the direction of the stroke so that it's perpendicular from moment to moment as you use your brush, so that you can wind up with things like this. And this is how you get stitches that go along a um, path, and how you wind up with arrows and all kinds of interesting things. You have to keep moving or you'll get your first stroke kind of strange, but it is possible, as you see, to make the entire thing the way that you want it to be. And um, that's all the controls for that one. Roundness, of course, changes the roundness of the stroke. So if I have this set to anything very high and I change the minimum roundness to zero, then the stroke will be smushed down to zero. But the minimum works exactly the way that it works for the size jitter up here, or for the size control up here except that you're using roundness. And the jitter works the same way too. And all of the controls also work the same way. So I don't think there's any point in really getting into much of that. You've already seen how those work. Flip X and flip Y lets you add an X or a Y flip jitter to whatever else you're doing. So if you have both of those and you have the angle, and let's put the size back on at pen pressure you can wind up with some really interesting strokes. Because remember, all of these tools work interactively so that you can use them to pretty much make the brush do whatever it is that you want the brush to do. And I'm going to have to leave you on your own to play with the rest of this now that you've been introduced to all of these things because we're out of time. Next time we'll look at scattering. Until then, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.